Meghan Markle and Prince Harry are heading to the picturesque Fraser Island this afternoon on the seventh day of their landmark 16-day tour of Oceania, and they are expected to stay in the award-winning Kingfisher Bay Resort, which will be perfect for the pregnant Duchess who has been left worn out following a week of engagements. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex have a variety of engagements to attend and will be met upon their arrival by the traditional owners of Kagri, the Butchola people and the Premier of Queensland. Their Royal Highnesses will also take part in a traditional welcome to country smoking ceremony and unveil a plaque for the dedication of the forests of Kagri to the Queen's Commonwealth canopy. Fraser Island's rainforest is home to the Satine trees which, known for their hardiness in water, were used to build the London docks in the 1930s. It has been reported the Duchess will not take part in all of her official duties during the day, but will instead will rest in the fancy resort which boasts quiet beaches, secluded villas and a fancy health spa. Kensington Palace said in a statement, after a busy program, the Duke and Duchess have decided to cut back the Duchess's schedule slightly for the next couple of days, ahead of the final week and a half of the tour. The Duke will continue with the engagements on Fraser Island as planned. It is believed Meghan has not been suffering from morning sickness, but she has been left worn out following a series of back-to-back -back official events around Australia this past week. Prince Harry and Meghan arrived at Hervey Bay around an hour ago in an Aussie RAF jet. The couple left the airport in separate cars as the Duchess is expected to spend the day resting in a resort on Fraser Island. Meghan and Harry have just arrived at Harvey Bay. The Duchess of Sussex stopped to say hello to well-wishers and she is now expected to board the Tasman Adventure, a local whale-watching operating boat that will bring her to the island. The Duke is taking a different boat as he needs to take a quicker route. Hundreds of royal fans have arrived early at the Riverhead's Wharf Barge stop, hoping to catch a glimpse of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Suzanne Denton from Riverheads, has been at the stop since 6.30 am. Ems Denton said she hopes to get a picture with Prince Harry. She added, I've followed Harry all of his life. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry are currently flying to Fraser Island. A video shows the couple boarding the plane, Meghan is wearing a loose purple dress while Harry a navy blue shirt and a pair of camel chino. Prince Harry is expected to receive the traditional welcome to country smoking ceremony from the Butchola people before a plaque is unveiled to dedicate the popular holiday spot's pristine rainforests to the Queen's Commonwealth Canopy Project. He will also visit Lake Mackenzie before meeting rangers from the National Park to learn about the picturesque island's unique animal and plant life. Fraser Island's hardwood trees were used to build the London docks in the 1930s due to their famed hardiness in water. Queensland Premier Anastasia Palazsuk will also hand the newly pregnant couple a handmade teddy bear from Tanbo. Moments after Prince Harry helped raise the iconic Invictus Games flag on the top of Sydney Harbour Bridge. He comforted a serviceman's widow who joined him on the climb. Gwen Churn, 41, who was one of the select group scaling the bridge with the prince, shared how a sympathetic Harry listened to the story of her late husband, Australian Special Forces officer Peter J. Cafe, who died by suicide in February 2017 at the age of 48. The pair spoke for nearly 10 minutes on the descent, and the prince asked about her children, Emily, 6, Lachlan. 3, and stepson Tom, 19, and how the family was coping. Lachlan is the spitting image of my husband. Harry said something like the children must remind you of him, or live on in him. And I said my son is so much like him, Churn, who grew up in Cleveland, Ohio, tells people. It was comfortable and thoughtful. Churn says Harry, who lost his mother, Princess Diana, when he was just 12, and her spoke about grief and loss. He understood what I meant. When you understand loss, I think it's obvious, she explained. He did ask me if I was getting the support I need from the defense and ex-servicemen and veteran community. She works closely with U.S.-based Tragedy Assistance Program for Survivors and talked to Harry about their partnership with the UK's Diana Award. Harry, who is touring Australia with pregnant wife Meghan Markle, 37, 
was on the bridge to help herald the start of his Paralympic-style contest for wounded, sick and injured servicemen and women and veterans, which starts in Cindy this weekend. As the 34-year-old prince's entourage tried to move them along from the outing, Harry wanted to ensure they had enough time to talk. He stopped and said, I'm in the middle of a conversation, and I'm not going to leave this. We were talking about my story and mental health and how difficult it is still, in our society, to talk about grief and loss and suicide. And how important things like the Invictus Games are to shedding light on, and allowing people to start to have these conversations that are great to have. Churn, who is an advisor for widows, veterans and families for the Australian Department of Veterans Affairs and an Invictus Games Ambassador 2018 as the grief is the basis of so much suffering. We are not dealing with the daily losses we have or the major losses of a husband or a son. Heaven forbid we actually talk about suicide and the real causes of it and that it is more complicated than just one issue on one day. She added, the fact that he and Meghan are shining their light on the Invictus Games, highlighting for so many people the service and sacrifices the serving members and their families, and highlighting their families, gives people hope. Harry asked quite a few questions about my story, so he had it correct in his head, she says. Chern met Peter, known as Pete, when she was working in development in Afghanistan in 2008. He re-enlisted in the Australian Army in 2010, joining the Special Forces, 2nd Commando Regiment, in 2012. She moved to Australia, giving birth to Emily while he was on deployment to Afghanistan in 2012. Then four years later, while deployed in Iraq in first half of 2016 he suffered a stroke. He had shown signs of PTSD, anxiety and paranoia during our entire relationship. But after the stroke his cognition was not improving as quickly as he would have liked it to. The only sign was that he wasn't processing things as quickly, and he had a small black spot in his eyesight, she explains. When you're in a high-performing environment like the special forces, when you're not performing at your highest, you can tell that, Chern said. That created a lot of anxiety and pressure for him. He started losing thoughts. He didn't believe defense had his best interests at heart, even though they were telling him everything to the contrary. And he became really angry and violent on the Friday and then on the Monday morning he died by suicide in our garage. Me being involved in the Invictus Games has actually got me out of bed. I gain resilience, churn shares. I don't have to climb a mountain today, but just put one foot in front of the other. She says Harry and Meghan are doing so much good with their place in the world, using their power and their privilege. Many of our leaders could learn from that. They are changing people's lives because of it. They are changing the way we are looking at mental health globally because they care, they are paying attention to it, and flying that Invictus Games. That is changing and saving, lives every single day. Straight out of a romantic comedy, y'all. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle looked so in love during a torrential downpour in Dubbo on Wednesday, October. 17. The newlyweds, who recently announced they're expecting their first child together are currently in the middle of a 16-day tour to Fiji, Donga, New Zealand, and of course, Australia. Meghan looked lovingly at her man while holding an umbrella over him during a speech, and he reciprocated the same facial expression in a separate pic. I mean, come on! This these two are just too adorable. Harry, 34, and Meghan, 37, shared their exciting baby news on Monday. October 15 right before beginning their first leg of the tour? Their Royal Highnesses the Duke and Duchess of Sussex are very pleased to announce that the Duchess of Sussex is expecting a baby in the spring of 2019, Kensington Palace revealed in a statement. Their Royal Highnesses have appreciated all of the support they have received from people around the world since their wedding in May and are delighted to be able to share this happy news with the public. The, literally perfect looking, couple attended the wedding of Princess Eugenie and Jack Brooks Bank on Friday, October 12th and Meghan was super sneaky about hiding her baby bump at the special event. I knew she was pregnant when she wore that massive coat, over, the weekend. 
One user commented on Twitter. I knew Meghan Markle was pregnant when she wore the code dress to Princess Eugenie's wedding, added another. While hindsight is 2020, the Duchess of Sussex often wears figure flattering ensembles, and a billowy number seemed a bit odd. In fact, the former Suits actress totally distracted us from her bump just three weeks before announcing the news, by changing up her hairstyle. Instead of rocking her typical curly hair, Meg opted for a sleek straight do, and naturally, the press went wild. After all, it's not every day that a royal decides to switch up her signature hairstyle. In fact, the Duchess sister-in-law, Kate Middleton, seemingly did the same thing when she was pregnant. Back in September 2017, a Twitter user theorized that Kate uses her hair to distract the media from her growing belly. Pattern as Duchess of Cambridge changes her hairstyle, people concentrate on her head, and, then, she, announces, the, pregnancy, they wrote. Interesting. Speculation aside, one thing's for sure, Harry and Meghan are so freaking in love it hurts. Also, their baby is gonna be drop dead gorgeous. Wow.